Hello guys, I'm doing a little project today. Uh, I want to show you my ways of getting a, a secondary ignition waveform. With the coil and plug engines, it's getting more and more difficult to a, get a secondary ignition waveform. And one of my uh, favorite tools is out. Of course, I'm using my, my scope. Is a uh, Pico coil and plug adapter. And uh, this is just a single probe and uh, you're gonna hook up your uh, lead to a scope and uh, simply place the uh, probe on top of the coil and uh, you'll get your uh, waveform. Now sometimes you have to kind of move the probe around to uh, get a signal, the best thing you can get. Now with uh, different coil, coil and plugs sometimes it's difficult to uh, obtain a signal Sometimes if you have an uh, aftermarket coil, it may be a little bit more ins insulated, so that can affect your uh, signal as well, the waveform. But for the most part, this works. Now, if I have a dead misfire, this is my first tool that I'm using, it, and uh, I'm just going from one coil to another until I find one that has, has a problem. Now, I'll g I'm going to leave a link in the description. Uh, the channel name is uh, Logical Canuck, I believe. He's from Canada. He actually made one of these uh, signal probes, and uh, so it works fine. Now, when things get tough and uh, when we cannot pinpoint the misfiring cylinder, we would like to obtain a waveforms from multiple cylinders. Now, on this car, this is a two-wire coil and plug system. I can actually back probe and get a primary ignition waveform but this is a V6 engine so I, I have a four channel scope and I cannot get all of the signals on one channel so there are different options that are available for to, to uh, get those signals now one is, uh, this is a SIA 2000 this is a snap on a secondary ignition adapter you can actually get a signal from eight cylinders so this is actually made for a uh, Ray Spark system and uh, it works fairly well. I have another actually another kit that I use for Ray Spark system that works so much better than this and uh, it's actually made by I think this is a OTC. Uh, yeah. This is what I use for Ray Spark system. Now the beauty of this unit is that this unit is actually is going to reverse your waveform. Now, one of the most difficult parts with the Ray Spark system is that you have to identify your cylinders. Now with this system it's actually so much easier because all I need to do is attach my probe to one of the uh, wires and uh, now this I'm not sure what this is designed for some I think precision uh, this scope I'm not I never had this scope but it works very well in my Pico and uh, so you always use two channels one channel is going to be my sink and this now the second channel I'm going to get my waveforms from all of the cylinders. Now on this setup, uh, what I can do, I just uh, connect my lead to one of the wires, spark plug wires, and I would uh, connect to one side. Yeah, this actually works off to 9 volt battery, so you turn the unit on, and here's the ground lead. You connect to the ground, and then of course this is your uh, lead you hook up to your scope. Now. If uh, my signal is inverted, all I have to do is actually move it to another side, like so. And this this unit is going to invert the signal for me. So all I just go from one coil, to one one uh, spark plug wire to another until I get all my all my uh, signals the way I wanted them. So this is really really nice. Uh, this is the one that I use for race park system all the time. So. That is another option where you can actually obtain multiple ignition waveforms. Now, the, uh, so, the, so this one actually, you 
works the same, but to you, you got to have a uh, spark plug wire to attach this unit. So what you got to do is basically you're gonna need a, one of these uh, adapters. You take the coil out, and then uh, you're gonna plug in your um, adapter between the coil and a spark plug, and uh, you attach your lead to, the, to from your uh, second ignition adapter like so and uh, then you're gonna get your your waveform and uh, it works works fine now the uh, other option which I, I, I like the most I like the best is actually a snap-on coil and plug pickup stick and uh, this you know, this little guy is actually designed it's very it's kind of flexible and uh, what this will do, you actually lay this on top of the coil and uh, you will get your, your signal. So basically it works like this. You're going to lay it on top of the, of the coil so you can actually get a signal for multiple coils. And uh, it can, you can actually get a signal up to, up to four. So if you have a V8 engine, you, can one, you put one on each uh, bank and uh, get your get your signals and this really works well I really like it now this one actually has a option you can actually increase or decrease your signal depends which way you you flip your your stick and uh, other end it's actually like a audio cable like this one this is what and uh, this is designed to be used with a uh, snap-on coil adapter lead which is this cable and uh, so you gotta have this because both ends are male and you're gonna have a, you have to have this I just bought this on eBay this female to female adapter and you connect these two together and uh, then uh, for my Pico I have to get a BNC adapter as well which I have it in my toolbox and I'll uh, be able to connect it to my to my Pico scope it'll be like So, so this will be a complete setup for, I actually have a video how to use this uh, adapter and it works well. However, this adapter has a lot of limitations in a way that first it's, it's too long and on many cars like on V6 engine, this one works actually okay on the Chrysler but I had so many different cars that I wanted it to use this this stick and I couldn't. It was just way too long. Even on uh, not long ago I worked on uh, it was Avalanche, Chevy Avalanche, and uh, it's a V8 engine. And I put this on a uh, driver's side. It was a that was a I think Bank One I believe. Or Bank, I'm not sure anyway. So it was on a, on a driver's side. It lay nicely on my on my coils and I could get nice signal now on the passenger side it was just a little bit too long like a quarter inch too long and it was hitting the firewall so I had it, it was really and it was kind of bow like this and when that happens your signal get kind of screwed up because this pickup stick it's no longer laying flat on your on your uh, on your, on top of your coil and then the signal gets weak on that coil it would be like this instead of like that and uh, so and then you're looking at your waveform, you're thinking you have a, you know, something, you have a problem with your coil, but it's just a signal that just this stick, it's not laying flat on the, on your coils. And so I decided to actually make some, a couple of these pickup sticks myself, and uh, this is what I came up with. Now, I'm using a uh, copper bar. And this is a uh, now this is a three quarter inch by one eighth of an inch. And the reason I'm using this is because it's the only one I can find on eBay. And there's a seller on eBay. Actually, I think he he sells like a scrap pieces of, of, of copper, and this actually works very well. So this is the uh, now this one be like this is a ten inch long piece. Uh, the other day I was working on Honda Pilot, and this is you know the. I just could not get it. I actually made one already and I could not use it because it was too long. So I, I made this one 10 inch long for, for those kind of engines. So the first step, what I'm doing, now I'm going to use this with my uh, snap-on coil adapter lead. Now the reason I want to use that is because 
this lead actually has a capacitor built in and uh, that's going to protect my scope in case of a spike. If, my, if I have a crack on my coil and plug, this will protect my scope. In addition to that, uh, I'll show what else I'm going to do with my, with my adapter. So the first step, I'm using a, just a regular audio cable and on another end I uh, added, this is just a male connector, just a simple male connector, like this one. So I took the plastic, the, took the insulation out of it, and uh, so on another end you strip the insulation off and then you connect the, a uh, positive part, this is like the positive part to your to your uh, connector, okay, so this is the negative part, it just kind of stays free, you kind of push that back a little bit, so that's how I got this down, and this is just the press with the, with the pliers, and this kind of gives me a nice good solid connection, it's not gonna, it's not gonna move, so that's the first step, the next, uh, second step is to a uh, solder that to your uh, copper bar, and uh, this is how that looks like, and uh, on the other, I actually have a piece of uh, in, uh, shrink tube, and I just slide it on and, uh, and shrink it, so that kind of gives me a nice uh, setup here, and uh, you can see I had to use actually a propane because it dissipates so much heat, but it, it, it works fine. It's, it good, gives me a good, good connection here, so that's, that's, a second, that's step two. Now, you don't want to use this without any insulation on it. So for insulation, I'm using a uh, uh, plastic dip. This is a tip from my uh, friend of mine from Texas. It's a plastic dip. This is uh, this is a uh, spray, and this is just. And uh, so the step two would be to a uh, dip each end of your probe into the. Now this is a uh, 14 inch long one. This is specifically made for Chevy engines. V8s, and uh, I like to have this one, so that, see that snap-on tool, you know, they are straight, and they, this, kind, this cable gets in the way as well, so uh, with this one I specifically wanted to make it 90 degrees, so it's not, it will not get in the way when I, when I lay this on top of the coils. Okay, so the step three will be to simply dip your uh, bar into the, uh, your, your uh, uh, this is a, what's called a plastic dip, it's basically a, uh, like, like, like a rubber, liquid rubber and you just uh, dip into the can and I dip both ends now like a three I did like a three times and now it gives me a good robust insulation on my on my bar now I can't get it all the way in so what I what I have to do I just have to use like a brush and finish the uh, middle part of it and uh, this is the uh, one that I'm actually the same length that I'm in the process of uh, finishing. You can see actually this is still like, kind of thin in the middle of it, so I'm kind of building up my my uh, insulation. I the uh, I used my uh, spray and I don't really like it because it's, it has a very thin layer, it makes a very thin layer, but there's a lot of air bubbles in it. I just like it actually. What I, what I do, I will just take one one bar, dip it into the um, into the solution and just kind of smear it off and you just have to be patient and uh, you just have to do it four or five times until you get enough insulation on it and uh, so you can see it's, it's a very robust insulation that I can build up on, the, on these bars and then uh, along with that also I uh, <clears throat> for extra protection this is the so it's like the final product I actually also put the shrink tube over, and then uh, and then I and dip the each end again over the shrink tube, and now now this one is actually straight down, and uh, and it it's 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 solid. I mean, now what I added to this bar, I put this uh, the uh, zip ties that has this little eyelets on it. Now, a lot of times you have a problem to actually keep this on the coils, so I'm trying to use this to uh, like uh, have a little hook. Uh, most likely I'm going to use a uh, maybe a small bungee cord, and uh, so on, on this video I'm just going to use this little hook, so I can actually put this hook in here and uh, 
like so, and I can actually hook this to my wire or whatever I can hook it on to keep this on a, on a coil. Sometimes, you know, head is angled too much and you just can't, you just cannot keep this on the, on the coils. Now, something nice about this setup also is that it's, it's really has good traction on it. The snap on is just way too smooth, and it just, it's just—it's hard to keep it on the on the coils. Now with this, it's just—it's just way too smooth. But this one is kind of a—you know—it's a rubbery, and it's—it has a good—you know—kind of a—it just stays on on the on the coil better, on the coil is better. So um, anyhow, so this is the uh, my final product. I may actually put another layer of uh, with with my spray. I'm not sure, but that's that's what. I end up with. So now I have, uh, I'm going to have one with a 10, 12 or 14 inch long piece. I may even make one that's like 16 or, or 15, I'm not sure. I have a, quite a few neighbors that have a BMW and it has a, a straight 6 engine. So on those engines I can just put these, like two of them to, in a, together. But I may just get one that's maybe like 14 or so, maybe 16 inch long and that, that should I believe cover the whole engine. So, but that's that's in the future. So anyhow, so I'm going to show you now how to how to set up, and then we're going to compare the signal from this bar to a uh, snap-on. And uh, I'm just going to put one. I'm going to put this bar on the front bank, and I'm going to put the snap-on bar on the on the other bank. And uh, there's going to be bank two. It's going to be my homemade, and the bank one is going to be a snap-on. And then we're also going to use a uh, the uh, uh, Pico adapter we're going to put it on, on slot number one so we can actually see the uh, use it as a sink and um, that that should that should work and the firing order is going to be one two three four five and six it's pretty simple so all right i'm going to set everything up and then we'll take a look at it all right uh before we get to the car i want to show you i was a little stressed out trying to figure out what's the best way to a you know get enough insulation on the on the bar and kind of seems to be, you know, pretty straightforward, but it's, it gets a little tricky because you can't just dip it in and uh, leave it upside down because it's going to drain, it's going to drain down and it's going to get kind of, you're going to have more insulation at the end, but not enough in the, in the middle of it. So a little, little trick that I've learned, you want to shake the bottle a little bit to steer it, you know, solution before you dip it in. So uh, just go in and out, and now I, I'm going to keep it. I'm going to drain this just a little bit. You can see it, it, it drains down. Okay, now I'm going to stop. I'm going to kind of go, I'm going to keep it upside down just for a minute, just for a little bit. A little bit. And uh, okay, at this point, you, can, you actually want to leave it flat. And that's what I found that worked the best. So, what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to clamp this to the end of this cardboard. And in next, for next five minutes, I'm going to keep flipping this, you know, a couple of times. And it, all this solution is going to actually stay nice and even on your, on your bar. Okay, now I'm going to start flipping this. And it dries actually fairly fast, but it, it can be a little frustrating trying to keep this on the on the bar. Now I can see actually it's nice and smooth, it's nice and even. So just uh, now I'm going to do this three times to get it, you know, to build up enough enough insulation on this uh, on this bar. And this is a short enough that I can actually, you know, I think I can do both ends. Now this end kind of gets tricky as well. What I would do, of course. This the the, the, uh, the cable is gonna get messy. You just kind of milk that down a little bit, and uh, just be patient. That's all it takes. Now you can see it's nice, nice and even. I'm gonna flip it again. So again, for the next five minutes, I'm gonna be doing this until it kind of hardens enough, and then it will, it will, uh, it will. You're gonna have nice even coat of the uh, uh, plastic dip on your on your on your bar. Now before I finish, let's check this out. Now you can see it's still a little bit of a you know, it needs a little bit more time, but you know, this is just the first coat, and uh, it's it's pretty nice and even. Like you know, it actually it will once it dries, it will you know flatten even more. But you can see how nice and even 
this insulation is. So you don't want to keep it, you know, upside down all the time. It's just going to drain everything, you know, you know it's going to pile up at the bottom of your bar. Again, just uh, put some put some solution on it and then uh, drain it just a little bit and then lay it flat and keep rotating for next five or six minutes until it hardens enough that's gonna it will and now it's not gonna go anywhere so this is actually pretty nice uh, uh, this was actually driving me crazy I was, was really struggling to get nice even coat over the bar and I found this to be uh, the best the best way to go okay I want to show you the uh, this bar that I'm still working on. So this is one that's a 14 inch long and uh, this is a V8 uh, 5.3 Chevy engine and uh, you can see the bar goes all across the coils but it's just the right link that it just works it just fits so much easier and uh, having this uh, wire at 90 degree it, it's not in the way, it's not, gonna, it's not gonna get wrapped around anything it's, it's really nicely laying on my on my on my coils and I can put it here it now depends you know what where it's gonna you're gonna get your best signal I can put it here but it's it's a really nice has nice traction on it so it's not gonna it's not gonna move on me I can put it here whichever whatever works for me I can I can put it on it so alright so let's go ahead and uh, see the waveform okay here's the setup my uh, snap-on Pickup's going to be on uh, on bank one, and you can see this is what I'm talking about. It just gets way way too long, and uh, you know sometimes it just gets in the way, and it's kind of light. But see, I have to kind of have to probably move this be under this wire here to get a better. Now the one good advantage of this is kind of it's very flexible, so that that is better in a way that you can actually slide it slide through uh, obstacles and stuff. But uh, so anyhow. I'm going to have this pickup on the bank one. This is a uh, my homemade. It's going to be on a bank two. Now on this engine, the best signal is actually is when we put behind a coil. If you put on the top, it gets way too noisy. So now the this is my uh, I just put it in there and uh, actually you just it's pretty as I said it's kind of heavy and it lays now up against the coils just fine and. Um, I'm going to have my sink with my Pico uh, up against the coil number one. I just wedged it right up against the coil. I really don't care about that signal much as long as I have some kind of a signal that I can use it as a sink. And uh, all right. And then uh, of course I have this adapter here that I can that I can actually connect both of my coils, my pickups, to a one to one uh, cable. And uh, I got this one cable connected to ground and then uh, also I have a, the uh, sna uh, the uh, Pico pickup connected to ground as well and uh, now on my on my scope I have a uh, channel 1 is going to be my multiple cylinders waveforms and uh, channel 2 is going to be my sink okay let's set the scope channel A is going to be just a uh, regular leads just uh, and uh, probably gonna go maybe I don't know 200 millivolts and uh, 500 millivolts I should do as well channel B I generally put my uh, the, the this one I put it on 200 millivolts that works fine and then uh, I'm not gonna set this the uh, I'm not gonna set my trigger yet I'm gonna start the engine get the waveform and then uh, I'll set the trigger on the on channel number two sometimes if you if you set the trigger right away it can mess you up and I like to get my waveform going and then I can I can set my trigger Trigger. 
מבחינתי. אני
that that will be okay. Probably I'm gonna do a little bit another coat of maybe the spray to uh, finish this one, but it, it works fine. And um, again, this is will you know when when we using these kind of adapters. And again, that's in a case when you're really having a hard time to find a misfiring cylinder when you're struggling to uh, if you have a dead miss. You know, you don't have to do all that stuff, but sometimes it is necessary to uh, get a um, you know waveforms for all of the cylinders to find intermittent problems. With this, you can even take the car for a test drive. Uh, that would work as well, and uh, it can be used on any scope. You don't have to. I, I do like Pico. That's what I now use all the time. But uh, it can be used on any scope. Or you do, you've got to need. You, you should have two channel scopes so you can actually get a sink to know what your firing order is and um, it, it works fine. Well, that's it. Okay guys, thank you and uh, see you next time.